Will Staten Island break away from the city? Will a potential school bus strike pose a security threat? Lots of questions, and we'll get answers. The point starts right now. Staten Island has a zoo, a ferry, an angry wild turkey population, and lots of deer. But Staten Island Borough President Vito Pacella has his ears up to his ears with other problems. Vito, first problem, migrants. They want to come and put people in your borough. There's a school, a Catholic school, and the people in Staten Island do not want it. What's going on? No, you're right. Um, what we said about a year ago when the first migrants have arrived, uh, we said that the policy itself was going to be unsustainable because you can't sort of say, come to New York and we're going to put you up in a hotel and feed you and give you debit cards and taxpayer-funded health care. So you come from, chances are you're not making too much money where you come from. Uh, why wouldn't you take that opportunity? And f unfortunately, we were right. Uh, but now it has morphed into a, I think, a crisis, a situation that is out of control without any end in sight. And there's a section in Staten Island, a very residential area. It's called uh, Aracar. It's right over the Verrazano Bridge. And it's the St. John Villa Academy. Yeah, St. John Villa Academy was an old, it was a forever a girls' Catholic school. That shut down a few years ago. The city is now using it as a migrant shelter. And the problem there is it's right across the street from another old girls' Catholic high school and two other elementary schools in the heart of this residential district. And if you say, where is the worst spot to put a migrant shelter, this would be the spot. So Curtis Lewa says he's threatening to close down all four bridges that go to Staten Island because residents are so angry about it. How do you feel about that? I, I, don't, I don't know if I subscribe to that view. I, I am just as upset and I feel the, the, the pain of people and we've been out on a regular basis trying to highlight that and suggest publicly, privately to the city that they pick another location. Uh, and we won't stop because it's not right and we have to be the voice of the people uh, who are dealing with this. What we said also last year was Staten Island did not solve this problem. Why are we forced to, what, did not cause the problem. Why are we forced? and told we must solve the problem. Uh, I think it gets back very fundamentally to something called the right to shelter consent decree. Right. That the city believes that it must uh, accommodate and provide shelter to anybody who comes here. And I think that's insane. You know, the, maybe the original intent 40 years ago was noble to take care of people who were living on the street, but they were New Yorkers, or people who were destitute and didn't have a place to stay or they were transitional housing. And I would say this, if anybody thinks that the right to shelter con consent decree says that if a million people showed up to New York City today that we would have an obligation to, to again, take care of them, I would think, and everybody else I would think, would think it's insane. And, and I think that has to be addressed before we can solve this problem that's spinning out of control. So you're calling on the judge to actually grant the city's application to give, be given some wiggle room, some leeway, so it doesn't have to do that. Or go back into court. I wish I could. I'm not a party to the consent decree. There are a handful of people who, who have the standing to do so. Uh, and I would think that to provide some clarity and some clarification that the obligation does not exist. Uh, and I think anybody who reads the consent decree can map it out and see that. That's my opinion. Uh, we actually took the step, it was a release to St. John's Villa, to sue the city. And we won at the trial level, and the city um, appealed almost immediately and was reversed. Uh, we have a hearing on uh, September 14th before that same judge, and we're going to argue on the merits that this is the wrong location. But the big picture, in my opinion, is to challenge the right to shelter consent decree. So let me ask you this. The latest development in this ongoing saga is that the Biden administration is apparently considering um, a move that would force migrants who come into the country without authorization to stay in the border states like Texas and other border states before the, and, and apply for asylum there while their asylum claims are being um, litigated. Is that a good idea, a bad idea? I, 
Well, this is the administration that says the board is closed, right? So it's, it's obviously it's not. So I don't see how they could ever enforce that. Uh, do we? Is that a, a move to sort of deflect and say we're not going to send them to New York City anymore? New York City will be the beneficiary of that. Yeah. I happen to believe that folks who are seeking asylum in other countries should go to the neighboring country and petition for asylum, not have to come across seven or eight countries, or as many are doing, they're flying in from Europe to Mexico, they're flying from Africa, around the world to Mexico and walking across, because they know they can get you know, there's no problem. So I, I don't think that that's a, a, a reasonable uh, solution. And what we also said is the federal government caused this problem by allowing the borders to be open and allow anybody who wants to come across to, to, to seek entry into the United States. So do you think the Biden administration is panicking by, you know, proposing this as a possibility? Uh, you, well, I think it's an, it's probably one of the things that just a trial balloon, you know, see if this will appease uh, appease the folks who are rightfully upset of this situation, and it's and you can feel it. You can feel it day by day. It's it's spinning out of control. And what's the impact here, right? I can't. We can't really control what the federal government is going to do. What we control, we can do here. So we asked for an independent budget office uh, assessment last year. It was about a half a billion dollars. Now it's twelve billion in. Canada. Counting. That $12 billion is going to come out of the city taxpayers. It means no less schools, uh, less parks, less pay for police. Whatever it is, money's fungible, and it's got to come from somewhere. So let me ask you this question. If the Biden administration goes through with this proposal, what does Texas Governor Greg Abbott do? I mean, he's already sent busloads of migrants to New York City and other cities around the country that have sanctuary rules um, already. Will he now send more buses of people who are now stuck in Texas to try to, you know, alleviate his own problems there? Why wouldn't he? Uh, I mean, if you're, he, from my observation, he has tried to do everything he can to protect the integrity of the border between Texas and Mexico. And it seems like every step he tries to take, and this is not to be supportive of him or oppose him, every step he takes, the federal government inter intervenes. He just tried to build this portable little, you know, wall in, in the Rio Grande, right? And then the federal government sued him, and they had a re and now Texas is forced to remove it. So I don't see how the folks in Texas are going to just tolerate rate being told from Washington you need to absorb and, and protect this, especially when the federal government is not helping them whatsoever. So, so why would they? Does that mean more migrants? He's going to send more migrants here to New York City? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't see any stop. Everybody's predicting that they will get another 10,000 per month. And where, where they come from Texas or they just make it here on their own, which gets back to two things. When, if you you got the faucet going in the sink, and the sink is overflowing. You don't try to bail it out with more cups. You shut the faucet off to stop th the water if you can, and I think that's number one. And number two, go back full circle, that until and unless the city challenges its right to uh, shelter consent decree, which is different from a sanctuary city status, this has to do with picking up the pay the tab for accommodating migrants, uh, we're, we're going to be in a heap of trouble. So there has been a move afoot, some people suggesting yet again that Staten Island should think about breaking away from New York City and being its own city. How do you come down on that? I think it's a reasonable time to begin that discussion. Uh, as somebody who supported secession in the past, uh, for full disclosure, uh, I, I think now if, if we're going to do it and talk about it, it's got to be a serious, deliberate conversation, the pros and the cons, the costs and the benefits, and I think that's what we're going to begin to do. Uh, I don't. I get the emotional, hey, we should just do it, uh, personally and now professionally, and the, uh, I think it would be more of a let's look at it, let's evaluate and assess it. And I'm not saying yes at this point, and I'm not saying no, but I think we should have the discussion. And, and I think the people of Staten Island are entitled to that. Is this bubbling up because of the migrant issue? I think the migrant issue, among others, uh, are being brought up, uh, I, I should say, a, a are justifying the discussion. You know, we went through this about 30 years ago when Exhibit A and all of it, aside from just standing on feeling like it was the forgotten borough and things just weren't happening and the interests were not aligned, we had something called the Fresh Kills Landfill. So you had the only garbage dump in New York City on Staten Island, Staten Island and that became sort of the battle cry why. And now we have a migrant issue of people, for the most part, in Staten Island do not want, among other things. And they're saying, well, if we can't control this, 
if we can't control our own destiny, then why are we still part of New York City? We should align ourselves and think a little differently and pursue another path. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.